hello and welcome again uh, in this uh, short video we're going to uh, analyze the course uh, uh, standard which is a sort of an extension of the HTTP protocol that is able uh, to uh, solve or manage uh, the problem of cross-origin uh, JavaScript uh, requests um, that uh, is uh, one of the issues that we need to solve when we s when we deal with the double server problem in, in, in React applications. Okay, in the, um, in the other video today, we, sh we saw uh, in practically uh, how to overcome the problem, how to uh, uh, enable this cross-origin uh, requests, uh, and, but here we are trying to understand what the problem is about uh, and, uh, uh, and learn uh, actually what are the, the solution and what is the, it's a, a real implementation uh, at the lower level. Hmm? Okay. So a uh, course stands from cross origin resource sharing, uh, which is uh, uh, one technique for uh, managing. So in some cases for uh, forbidding, in some other cases allowing uh, the uh, execution of uh, cross origin. So it's a sort of managing the path for entering to a web server. Uh, we first have to introduce a bit what's, uh, what we mean by origin in the JavaScript world and what are the problems of uh, uh, cross origin requests and how they were managed uh, thanks to, the, to this new cross standard that uh, in the last years uh, allows us to to um, to implement to enhance the the rest architecture of the web uh, because it allows us to to control much better what, what kind of calls you can make or not uh, okay so first of all uh, let's uh, define uh, uh, the, the process that is behind uh, this uh, cross origin problem uh, we we remember that of course we are uh, when we load a web page uh, the web page will load uh, of the html file but a lot of other resources and it's not a problem uh, among these resources there will be also uh, some javascript files and this is not a problem um, too so uh, uh, it's normal that a web page will collect resources to build the page with all the assets okay some of the assets will be javascript code um, uh, when we load a page, uh, these assets will be loaded from different uh, sources and may may be loaded from different servers. Huh? It's not a, uh, it's not a problem. It's allowed uh, to load an HTML from one website, uh, and like we did, for example, loading the uh, the Bootstrap CSS from its CDN, uh, loading the, the the React code from uh, another website, and so on. Hmm? Uh, the problem comes when you are executing some JavaScript code. Uh, your JavaScript code, when it's running in the browser, runs into the browser sandbox so that uh, strongly limits uh, the capability of the browser itself. And so, by default, uh, the JavaScript code that you're running is uh, uh, limited to only uh, contact and uh, open connections uh, using the Fetch API, for example, or the XML HTTP request uh, to other addresses to other web address to URLs that uh, share the same origin. See, this is a rule. This is a very strict rule. Uh, normally, the browser will block any request that you try to make, which is outside the, your origin. What do we mean by origin? Origin is a combination of the URI scheme, that may be HTTP or HTTPS, basically, the domain name and the port number. So the origin doesn't care about the path or the name and so on. Only these three ingredients are important for defining the origin of a, of, a, um, of a JavaScript file. So a JavaScript file has been served, has been downloaded from a given origin, and it may only contact and make requests to URI that are, have the same origin portion. So uh, in this case, we, uh, if we have a, a page that was called uh, uh, from this address, so HTTP, normal website, slash example, and so on, uh, this, these uh, uh, other uh, URI, URI that are very similar to the first one uh, may in some cases differ and have a, uh, have a different uh, um, origin. So in the first two are okay because they are the same protocol, HTTP, the same website, uh, and there are different paths, uh, but paths uh, are not included in the definition of the origin. All the other ones are not valid because in the first one we are changing the protocol to HTTPS, in the second one, we are uh, having a different website, even if it's in the same subdomain. This is a normal website. This is English.normal website, uh, but it's, it's different uh, um, enough. So it's not exactly the same uh, name. And so it will be forbidden. Or if we um, 
again we have a, a different name even if, if it's an alias for the server we need the, they have different origins so we need to keep that they are kept separate at, at this point and uh, the last one differs from the port so this one was on the default port 80 and this is on port 8080 and uh, that will be different so in this case all of these last four uh, requests would be blocked by the browser if the javascript will attempt to access those okay um, why are we blocking those uh, why does the, the the browser need to check all of this well actually it's because uh, we don't want uh, uh, um, a JavaScript code on one website uh, to be able to access uh, uh, other websites uh, uh, without a control. So if I visit, uh, uh, since it's, uh, it's very easy you know, to build a web page that will load resources from different parts uh, of the internet, uh, I don't want to load a web page in which I have a script that pretends to be a part of a given website, but then under the hood it will uh, um send data to uh, an, another server hmm? uh, so by, by visiting a website uh, i'm sure that this website can only share information with uh, with its own origin i'm not visiting a website that will uh, send information to another source uh, and will try to trick that source into, into thinking that uh, it's the legitimate for ten, from ten, for example there are a lot of attacks, uh, security attacks, that uh, exploit this sort of uh, loading a page from one server and then uh, sending, uh, le le letting the page believe that it came from a different server and so they continue the translation uh, from a different server. Uh, especially because the origin will also control the sharing of the cookies, uh, uh, all the security um, uh, limitations of the browsers are uh, based on this concept. Uh, so in, in general what you want to do is uh, uh, imagine uh, uh, our our small react application i i'm developing an application and i want my application to call my api i don't want anyone else on another website be able being able to call my api if i don't want it if i don't allow it explicitly my api are for my front end that's it so uh, a given um, uh, api call should only be uh, um, um, accepted from a known source so for the same origin so the javascript will come from me my same origin so i will accept any api call from that uh, javascript code in general uh, but in some cases uh, uh, maybe we want to allow other cross origin re um, uh, calls uh, so that the javascript that was delivered by one website uh, will be able to call an api on a different website uh, for example, when we have different servers, so multiple servers in our architecture that uh, uh, will, uh, um, in a way, uh, partition the, the application into different parts, maybe one for set static content and the other for the API and the other for, for the in interactive content and so on. Um, some uh, content delivery networks where, in where information is scattered through different servers for global balancing and so on or um, just uh, uh, so they will be serving the front end from different location and so you will call the, the single backend from different uh, possible front ends uh, and you want that to work or maybe you have uh, <coughs> some servers some api servers that are public uh, and so you want to contact uh, uh, i don't know the rest server for uh, for for google maps for example for a calendaring operation um, um, uh, application or or, or, so, or something like that so in some cases you want to be able to relax uh, this constraint and uh, uh, this is where the uh, course uh, uh, standard were uh, comes into play um, it was developed uh, uh, together with the html5 uh, working group uh, as, a, um, as an extension basically of, the, of http uh, because it defines uh, new http headers uh, that are used just to control this mechanism so it's, uh, it's become a standard, it's now mm, correctly implemented in all the browsers and uh, in all the servers uh, that uh, uh, try to obey to this uh, specification. Um, basically, the control lies with the server. Hmm? So imagine we have uh, uh, this uh, um, web page that was served from a domain A, so for this web server, 
so browser will first get the main page this web page will get the layout image and so on um, and so this web server by default uh, will accept all requests coming from the web page that was uh, delivered initially from the same website mm -hmm. that's okay uh, when a, a web page uh, will try to ask uh, other um, resources from different web server, servers like domain B, well, these uh, uh, requests will be controlled by the course settings of the second web server. So to allow or to deny these requests, that I repeat, are coming to domain B from a web page that was originally served by domain A. To allow or, or deny those, uh, the only point of control is domain B. So every REST API server decides uh, which kind of calls uh, it wants to accept from which web applications. Requests will always come from the browsers, but they want to check the code on that browsers where it was loaded from. I only accept requests from the code on, uh, from the browser that is running some code which was delivered by me or by my friends or by some website I trust. Okay, um, so in, in practice, uh, we want to uh, be able to define these uh, trusted uh, third parties, uh, uh, so the other uh, kind of application that are, will be allowed and we want to allow. Um, and uh, uh, of course, uh, there's always, uh, in this case, is two different risks. One is being too close, and so having uh, difficulty to run your own application because you are denying too much. And the other risk is also, also always being too open, so allowing everything, and they will open the possibility for an external attack to try to exploit our server uh, because it will be able to call our APIs, and so we can only block them at the application level. Uh, the good part, of course, is we can block the request directly at the, um, at the um, tr protocol level, so at the HTTP level. Uh, by the way, course is only able to solve a narrow part, a small part of the possible JavaScript problems. Uh, there are many other uh, possible uh, ways of, uh, of trying to break the security of applications. Uh, here you see some, uh, some acronyms, some, some, um, some definitions. Uh, uh, that if, if you are interested, you can try to uh, understand what they, what they mean. So there are more sophisticated ways. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, of bypassing this sandbox uh, by trying to um, to access resources from a website which is different from the one that you should be uh, contacting mm -hmm. so uh, i can trick a, a user to visit a website uh, thinking that it's a, a legitimate website and this one will be able <coughs> to uh, say to fake my uh, my presence on a different one mm -hmm. so there are many type of uh, of attacks uh, course does not solve all of them it's only uh, the basic mechanisms and then uh, uh, but we are not uh, uh, you know focused on the security in, in this course so i will leave it like that okay so just not uh, uh, first just remember we must configure the access level at the, the, with the course protocol uh, in the right way but this will not be the only solution to all the security problems unfortunately okay so what are these headers that uh, we are adding to uh, the HTTP protocol uh, using the course extension? Well, basically, um, a request, uh, when I'm making a request, uh, this uh, request becomes uh, a course request when it uh, uh, presents also a new origin header. So I'm uh, introducing myself by saying, okay, I'm coming from this origin. Um, the, the, um, the server will not trust this declaration of course the server cannot trust that it's the browser that will automatically insert that so you cannot control this header from your JavaScript code it's inserted directly by the browser so you are trusting uh, the implementation of the browsers to provide the correct origin hmm? so the kind of security is uh, is not uh, uh, very big because if somebody will tweak a browser or to create a, uh, browser extensions or something like that they can circumvent this kind of, uh, of declaration self-declaration i'm coming from this origin and you see that the origin will contain the uh, url schema https the server name and the port if it's not the, the standard one 
and uh, the uh, the response uh, will contain a response to this request so uh, i'm saying i am a request coming from this origin and uh, the uh, the response uh, uh, will uh, explicitly say okay yes i am allowing this uh, uh, origin hmm? uh, if the two origins are the same uh, or uh, this one is a separate set uh, of that so it will match there will be a, a sort of a, a string matching uh, and then the browser will allow the script to access the response otherwise the response is blocked hmm? so what you get uh, is that the server will reply uh, with the accepted origin the browser will compare the accepted origin with the requested origin with the declared origin and if the two don't match the browser will tell the javascript that the request just failed like if there was a network error so the browser uh, or the javascript will see an error in the fetch api the fetch will catch it mean uh, it will not uh, uh, complete it will be rejected um, but uh, uh, there will not the javascript will not have a few full details about the reason about that also for security reasons, uh, we are not disclosing which are the, uh, the, the addresses that were, were blocked. Of course, uh, we can also always have a, a very open and permissive uh, server that will uh, declare that will uh, accept any origin. So if a server will put this response, will the, the he this header in, uh, in its responses, uh, then every uh, browser will, ac will uh, allow the JavaScript code to call uh, those APIs. So for public API servers, of course, this would be uh, a good way uh, for presenting themselves. Uh, of course, you need to check the caller with other means, uh, so maybe having an authorization key or some token that will uh, um, recognize the caller to be authorized, because otherwise, uh, everybody will be able to call every uh, REST API on your server, modify your data, and it's not very, <coughs> very safe in this case. Uh, so uh, the real blocking uh, is on the browser using information provided by the server. So the control of the, the matching of the uh, origin allowed by the server with the origin uh, declared by the browser is in the browser. Uh, while uh, the, uh, the, the, the decision of who to allow is lies in the server. So it's a sort of collaboration that the, the browser, uh, let's say, guarantees that it will not, uh, it's part of the sandboxing of the JavaScript code. Okay, so the, the browser, in particular the JavaScript sandbox, uh, promises that it will block any request uh, that uh, the, the server will not, uh, um, does not uh, uh, allow. Hmm? Uh, if a server uh, doesn't provide this kind of header in the response, then uh, it, it assumes that uh, the request is, is being uh, forbidden. So if we don't do anything on the server side, all the uh, requests will fail if they are not from the same origin. Hmm? So we, we must do something. Uh, there are some cases uh, where um, uh, some uh, uh, some some requests uh, uh, do not send uh, cre the so-called credentials. Uh, so, for example, uh, the, the cookies. Um, usually, whenever you contact a website, you are providing all the cookies uh, that were delivered by that website in the past. Uh, but with fetch requests, uh, uh, contrary to the past, contrary to the normal get request, fetch is more secure. Is more. Um, careful of uh, what is uh, what kind of information it's sharing and so uh, in this case will by default will not uh, include any cookies uh, uh, but if we want uh, uh, we can uh, decide that uh, uh, this information should be included and so we want to uh, maybe use the cookies for authenticating to the uh, api server uh, we can do that uh, by specifying the, uh, whether we want to include them always or only on the same origin or uh, never which is the default value mm -hmm. so this will uh, we a second level uh, mechanism for disclosing more or less information according to the the origin mm -hmm. and uh, again this information is uh, managed by by the course headers um, we say that the course uh, is uh, or the permission is given or forbidden by the browser on a response that is already coming from the server so uh, the check or the validity check will come after 
the response has been generated and returned so this means that we are if i'm doing a, a get request the server will process the request will create the response and maybe the response will be blocked by the browser okay uh, it's not uh, it's, it's it's bad because we are transferring use, useless data but it's not uh, that doesn't create any damage but what happens if i'm trying to do a post for example uh, a post uh, will uh, be sent to the server the server will do some computation maybe change some data and then return the empty response with the with the origin header and the browser will block block this request so from the browser point of view the request has failed but from the server server point of view it already has been executed so for some type of requests uh, depending on the http methods in, in the methods that are um, dangerous that may change the, the content the browser will not send a request and just wait for the response of the server will do a so-called pre-flight request so when i'm trying to do a post before that the browser will send an option command to the same address i'm not calling it okay it's not a fetch with a uh, with a method option i'm doing my fetch with the method uh, um, post for example and uh, the browser first sends an option command and uh, uh, checks the course uh, permissions of this option command if the option we on the same uri of course if the option is permissive then it will send a post request if the option says that this request is not permitted then the browser will not attempt the post uh, in any case so in some cases uh, a single fetch request uh, will be translated into two different http calls one option to check whether the second request will be uh, uh, honor will be accessed uh, will be permitted and the second request if of course the first one was successful mm -hmm. so in this case we are uh, uh, blocking the browser or the javascript code from sending uh, information to websites that do not allow that uh this is done automatically you, you will see that in the network panel of the browser in the network request in this case you really see the two requests one options and say who uh who i, we, I didn't make an option call okay it's the browser that made it in, in those cases hmm? uh, so this is an example that shows uh, what is happening uh, um, uh, for example uh, the if if we, i'm trying to make a post uh, the browser will send first an option command so this is the http message the request message the command the verb here is option and this is the uri and it's saying okay this is my uh, origin this is my origin and uh, i i want to call the post method on this uh, uri and the server will tell us that okay on this origin you are allowed to do a post get or options or delete and so the browser will know that uh, this origin will allow these methods and so uh, i'm trying to do a post uh, and uh, uh, the post will be done in the next call hmm? okay so these uh, two steps of course this response is uh, cached by the browser so uh, if i'm trying to access uh, many times the same request uh, the pre-flight uh, will only be done at the beginning of the first uh, the first time of course we call a, a given resource um, and when is this mechanism applied hmm? so it's not always so there are different ways uh, many ways of uh, loading page from uh, from uh, loading content remote content from a web page um, and so we see some uh, some examples of uh, of the behavior of the browser um, scripts loaded from the script tag from other origin run with the same privileges of the other script in the web application so this means that if i'm loading a script from an external website that's the code in that script will appear or will be uh, say interpreted as it has my origin so it's uh, I'm, if i'm pulling some javascript code from a different source then that javascript code will have the same permission as the code i write on my server this on one hand is good because it means that uh, the libraries will be used uh, to call maybe uh, the uh, we can import some libraries that can uh, call my my api server 
but uh, we must be careful because we are loading some um, javascript code from an external source and giving that code the same permission that uh, uh, we had uh, with our single code okay so it will be, have the same permission as the code stored into our server if we want to uh, so uh, we, we could be vulnerable to some man in the middle attacks for example where I, tr I i think i'm loading something from the bootstrap website or the or from the react website uh, and maybe i made a typo in the url and i locked uh, loading a modified version from uh, a fake website uh, this is dangerous huh? so that's why uh, if you see uh, all the big uh, say provider of, of javascript code they always give you a, a, a signature for for your uh, code that uh, um, that you that the browser will check when it downloads the code so i i, I cannot download uh, some some code which is not really what i wanted to so it's a, a it's a second level check uh, uh that time i i i will only trust this code i will only load this code if the signature matches uh, and it means that i not i'm not risking of loading by mistake uh, or by some you know, network hacker uh, some wrong uh, javascript code from a different service and giving it the permissions that it shouldn't have uh, to begin with um of course this mechanism also is controlled by uh, by course so all the api servers will have uh, to to provide an access control uh, allow uh, origin uh, a header in the response um if i this is for the normal script so scripts uh, inherit the permissions of the page uh modules uh, uh, have a special origin so when i loading a script uh, with a uh, with type module which is uh, when, what we are doing if we are uh, importing some uh, some uh, um, es6 modules some uh, uh, javascript 2015 level uh, modules uh, um, we, we we know we know that is a good uh, way of uh, of loading the, the javascript code but uh, in this case the browser will force uh, the origin to a null value uh, and this means that unless we call in a server that allows everybody, um, then uh, it, the, the call is blocked. Mm -hmm. And so this is the reason, right now we can understand it, why we can't uh, load uh, modules from, um, from a file system. So at the beginning of the, of the course, uh, when we were just loading HTML files from disk, uh, we saw that the modules didn't work. It's because uh, uh the file system doesn't provide course headers and so the browsers will block this request because they don't see uh, the course headers and, uh, and so the all the modules uh, will never be loaded in this case mm -hmm. so this is the, the reason uh, in order to load them we need a, a local web server which is able to uh, provide uh, the, 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 the that content it's blocked because the origin of the page is a file URI and the origin uh, of the of the of the main.js uh, is uh, is null and so they don't match. Hmm? So that's uh, uh, we we need them to match uh, because they they will be uh, all both served by our web server. Hmm? So the local file system is a, has a special origin that will block the request. Uh, this was on the on the on the browser side so we know on the browser side that certain operations may be blocked uh, if we are working with file system if you're working with external scripts okay and we if we are uh, calling fetch uh, the fetch function uh, what happens on the server side so how can we control we we say that uh, uh, all the control of the uh, course access lies on the server it's the server who decides uh, which requests you want to accept and which request you want to, to reject and uh, um, actually every web server has a special configuration and uh, in in apache there are some uh, there's a mod course modules uh, and uh, there are some headers configuration headers to be set uh, in order to to um, specify uh, which uris are allowed which uris should be allowed only for a subset of some of the domains and which uris should be blocked uh, altogether um so every web server you need to check the course documentation for the web servers you are using in our case when we are using the express uh, web server um, 
we need to, to specify cores uh, in all the cases uh, when the REST server is running on a different port than the main web application. Okay? So in, the, in our uh, three possibilities, uh, in one of the three, the browser is accessing two different web servers at the same time, and so uh, cores should be correctly configured. In the proxy case or in the build case, uh, it's not uh, really needed, uh, so it can be skipped in this case. Hmm? Um, by the way, remember that course is uh, um, configured on the server, but it's enforced by the browser. So if you are making um, a calls from some software that is not a browser, for example, wget or Sure uh, or some tools for browsing REST APIs and so on, uh, they, it doesn't, um, the, the, these tools don't check, don't enforce uh, uh, course. So, of course, uh, the server will respond with the correct header, but then the tool is free to ignore that, hmm? even because there is, no, there is not a page context from which these calls are made. So, the restriction is not a real security restriction on the server, is the security restriction in the browser, remember that. So, it's a sandboxing issue that the server will just help you to help the sandbox to decide what to block. The server by itself doesn't block anything. Okay. Um, in Express, uh, uh, the configuration is very, very easy. No? We have one middleware. Remember, the middlewares in Express are just uh, uh, functions that are um, um, inserted into the, into the processing pipelines for HTTP requests. And one of these middleware, uh, middlewares is called Course. So you just need to install the Course module and uh, um, install the middleware. So the, the easiest way is just app.use course and it will uh, add the course middleware to every request and by default the configuration of this course module is to allow everything. So if you don't include this then the response will not have the header, the course ac uh, the accept, uh, accept header and uh, um, so the request will be blocked. If you include this without changing the options then your web server will uh, return the header and so the course check will will be made and this header will be everybody asterisk and this uh, will allow every request hmm? so this single line will change totally you know, the permissions on, on your web server um, if you want to uh, allow that for all your all the requests in the website if you want to allow the course only on some requests so uh, for me, it's okay, it's okay that all the website will not be accessible with cores, uh, but some functions should be, should be publicly accessible. And so in this case, we can, you can just add the middleware in the, uh, in the, in the specification of uh, the specific route. So uh, we, you, you, you don't install it globally, you just install it uh, right, route by route, uh, and then uh, it means that the, these functions will be called before the real request function is uh, is served hmm? like uh, like all the other middlewares we we did we we saw the same syntax when we were trying to validate the, the input data uh, we are trying uh, the middlewares are just there for pre-process your uh, your request and response uh, before returning them uh, but again we without any more uh, further parameters uh, all origins will be enabled for all the HTTP methods. So for HTTP and HTTPS and uh, get, put, post, uh, uh, delete, uh, and uh, all the methods uh, for which a route is, is defined, of course, uh, they will be allowed. If you want to be more uh, precise and decide uh, which uh, website should be allowed and which uh, uh, and which method should be uh, should they be allowed to uh, to call. I can pass a configuration object like this one uh, to the course method. So instead of calling course without any parameter, I will pass an object like this, and then I can specify the wildcard for the allowed origins, uh, the methods that are allowed, uh, and uh, uh, these uh, these other two usually not, don't need to be uh, don't need to be modified. Uh, Prefi continue means that uh, if the preflight is false, then the the, 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 the the request should, mod should not be allowed to proceed. So we, we can modify the kind of response that the server is, is, do is doing. This is the default con configuration that, as you see, it will allow everything on every 
HTTP request. Um, if you are uh, allowing only uh, selective uh, or only some uh, um, some routes uh, or with course uh, then you should probably also uh, specifically uh, allow the options uh, uh, call on the on the request that require a pre-flight um, so if you are allowing a course globally you don't need to do this but if you're uh, enabling that for some specific routes, uh, for, not for the get, but for the post, or for the put, uh, uh, you should also enable a, an option route because otherwise uh, the uh, the browser will try to make an option call, uh, but the route is not defined. So Express will not uh, respond to that uh, uh, to that options call. Uh, in this case, you just have to provide the, the path and the middleware, and you see that you don't have any functions because you don't need to to process the request. The request is already known, uh, is already uh, prepared by Express, modified by course, and you don't need to do any further modification. So the third function, the last function is not provided here. So we are just saying that, uh, okay, on this URI, you can answer to the options request uh, with these uh, course options. Hmm? Or do the same for all the routes, uh, just uh, 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 just include it uh, as the first item and not the last one in order to to, um, to have the proper um, the pattern matching of the different requests. So if you find yourself that the requests are going through but the pre-flight requests are being blocked, uh, it's probably because you are being selective and you on the on the routes that you are enabling and you need to also to enable the options call uh, in, in addition to the other ones uh, that you already decided um so uh, from the practical point of view hmm, this uh, standard is very easy because it's just based on two headers uh, the origin declaration and the accept uh, the um, decision from the server and uh, from an implementation point of view it's also very easy if we want uh, just to have it working and uh, we just need to allow the the, the course uh, um, response headers for every request uh, especially in development mode, uh, is uh, you do, we don't need to do anything fancier or anything more secure. Of course, when we shift it to, to production, we'll need to check uh, the security requirements uh, of the production environments, and so we sh we will for sure need to be more precise or more restricted in what we are doing. If you find that your fetches are not going through, are being blocked with some network error, which is the generic error that you get, uh, just try to remember whether you need uh, to enable course on your web server and in express it's just one instruction in other web server it, it's some configuration um, parameter and just check that you did that um, because you will you will not get any more detailed information it seems that the server is not reachable or there is some network error in general in practice it's a course that is blocking your request Okay, so that's all for, for, for this topic and uh, just remember uh, when you enable the double server to, to, to enable this very little middleware uh, to let your, uh, your request go through. Thank you.